Illumination has made some interesting movies over the years, and there are a lot of villains in these movies. I have counted 18 of these criminals, so let's rank them, but based on their crimes. Over the past year, I have observed all these villains, and from a legal standpoint, some are a lot worse than others. Now, we will rank them from bad to worst. Let's go. Starting off, we have Illumination's most recent villain, the Chef from Migration. The Chef has Delroy locked in a cage and the Mallard family frees him from the evil Chef. But as it turns out, this villain is not even that bad. When you think about it, the Chef is just a strict guy, like most chefs. Then there are a few ducks ruining his entire kitchen and he just gets angry. He doesn't harm any of his guests and just hates those annoying duckies. When it comes to a legal battle, Chef would only end up with a fine or a warning because of his messy kitchen. Next up is the short-legged man that goes by the name of Aloysius O'Hare. He is a sneaky businessman who somehow managed to monetize air and runs a monopoly on the city and making them depend on his air products. If that wasn't enough, he spies on the entire city through hidden cameras so no one will threaten his powerful position. This guy is really shady and would definitely be caught for fraud and unfair market control. He would end up with up to 10 years in prison and millions in damages. The people he was scamming gave him what he deserved though. Bye, have a great time. Once there was a circus owner named Sergei, but Sergei doesn't really treat his animals the best. He scares a rare white tiger and hits his animals with a whip. He also illegally unleashes a pack of wolves on the city and even steals a pet and wants to use it for the wrong reasons. You will join my circus as a cannonball! <laughs> to top it all off, he has a big desire to take revenge on the pets and shoot the tiger. But then he gets stopped. This ends here and now! If he would end up in my courtroom, I would sentence him a pretty few years in the tank for animal abuse, and his circus would be shut down. I don't know how they do it, but next in line is another businessman. Jimmy Crystal is a hard negotiator and is running the musical scene. He wants to control it so hard that he doesn't care about getting his hands dirty with a little koala fur. But his biggest crime of them all might be sleeping without his underwear. After Burster Moon pulls off the show of a lifetime, Jimmy gets really pissed and tries to end him. Mr. Crystal would end up in prison for a decade and would pay some fines. But he does have good lawyers, so who knows if he will get away with it. Officers, arrest that wolf. After watching all these movies and comparing them to the law, the most weird thing is that all the evil business people just keep getting away with stuff. Huh? As the final businessman, we have the Onesler from the Lorax. The Onesler finds a beautiful forest and meets the Lorax. After spending time with the Lorax, he decides he likes money way more than nature and cuts down the entire forest and makes a fortune. Because of him, there is no good air anymore, and people like O'Hare got their business from it. At his older age, he regrets it all, but that doesn't justify anything, of course. He would end up in jail for quite a few years and would have to shut down his business if caught and pay the damages he created on the world. <laughs> hmm. You done good, Beanpole. You done good. Next is our favorite green Grinchy boy named the Grinch from the Dr. Seuss movie. The Grinch doesn't like Christmas times and decides to take over the end of year festivities. He steals Santa's sleigh and goes around the Christmas trees to steal all the presents. He basically committed burglary on an entire town. In the end, he apologizes and changes on his evil scheme. It was me. I stole your Christmas and I'm sorry. I'm so very sorry. Forever. But the judge would still have to charge him for his evil doings. At this spot on the list is someone who actually isn't a villain, but definitely is a criminal. Big Daddy from Sing is the father of Johnny, and as the name implies, he is quite large. Big D has a gang of gorillas who like to rob banks and use Johnny as a lookout and later as a getaway driver. But after Johnny gets stuck in traffic, the heist fails and he gets stuck in prison. But he didn't really want to stay there after he realizes his son is an amazing singer. He realizes he treated him wrong and wanted to give him a hug. 
the only problem is a wall between him and his son. Back in you go, Big Daddy. The first villain from the despicable Me universe is Wild Knuckles from Minions, the rise of Gru. He first was the leader of the Vicious Six, an infamous criminal organization. They have high ambitions and set out to steal the famous Zodiac Stone. Wild Knuckles is the one to do this, and after a struggle getting it, the rest of the gang cuts him off and betrays him. After that, he goes solo and finds young Gru. He turns Gru from a bad kid to a supervillain. After a final battle with his former colleagues, he ends up dead. But this was his final trick. As a wanted villain, this is actually an even bigger crime. Because of faking his death, he gets away with all the prior crimes. If somehow he gets caught one day, he would go to jail to the end of his time. Opening the top 10, we have Kevin Hart embodied as a little snow bunny. Snowball is a bunny who turned his back on the pet life and starts a criminal organization for the freedom of rejected animals. He fights the humans to free his ride or dies and has built a cult of criminals. Before being marked by the Viper, he finds out his new friends are not free, but dirty pets. From that moment, he dedicates his energy to catching these leech lovers. But after changing circumstances, he ends up working together with the pets and steals a bus to create some chaos. You make great teams, In the end, he finds a new owner and turns his back on the criminal life. At number nine, we got the Bears from Sing. After Mike decides to go out all baller, he cheats the Bears from their money in a game of poker. And from that moment, the Bears are on the hunt for the little rat. In their pursuit, they end up in the theater and force Buster Moon to give his money to pay for Mike. But there turns out to be no money. Because of the Bears opening the chest with a bat, the entire theater floods and gets destroyed. At the end of the movie, we see Mike escape from the Bears, it seems but the main bear manages to stay on the car. And since Mike doesn't return in Sing 2, I think we know what happened. Yeah. Life in prison for the bears. At number eight, we got the main star of the show, Gru. Gru starts off as a young delinquent by setting of fart bombs and terrorizing the arcade. <laughs> then he gets the opportunity to apply for joining the Vicious Six his heroes. They are not impressed and tell him to go off and don't bother. Gru comes up with the idea to steal from the best stealers to show his worth and starts a war with them. With the help of Wild Knuckles, he turns them into rats. Yeah. <laughs> and with Dr. Nefario, he starts building his criminal empire after stealing the Statue of Liberty and the Eiffel Tower from Vegas. He has set his eyes on a bigger goal, something no one has ever done before, stealing the moon. In his evil endeavor, he adopts some children and doesn't care about them at all. He ends up stealing the moon, which could potentially cause the end of the world. In Despicable Me Too, he fixes what he has done wrong and gets pardoned. But still, as a villain, Gru was a nasty one. Stealing the moon would get him a sentence our laws couldn't even fathom. Vector is a little rich kid with an insane amount of explosives. He is a real baddie and outworks Gru with his piranha gun and other inventions. He even has a shark swimming in his house. After he sees Gru has adopted children, he kidnaps them and wants the moon in return. Gru then gives the moon and Vector totally played him. No! Oh yeah! Stealing of the moon ended up being his defeat though. If Vector would face a judge, he would be sentenced for child abduction and a lot of illegal weaponry aimed at Gru's head. Following him up is the sequel villain, El Macho. As the name tells, El is a real macho. A forgotten villain who is supposed to be retired. He created an evil plan to turn the minions into monsters and serve him. He kidnaps all the minions and wants to shoot them into space. In the end, he even kidnaps Gru's new flame and ties her to a shark tied to a rocket. As a final fight, he turns himself into a monster, but gets defeated by the lipstick taser and finished off with a fart in the face. For attempting genocide on the species of Minion, this will be the first potential winner of the death sentence lottery. 
After Wild Knuckles got kicked out by his friends, Bell Bottom took over the Vicious Six. She looks for Gru after having lost the Zodiac Stone. She and her friends turn into Zodiac signs, and she becomes a giant dragon who has fun torturing Gru by putting him on a clock. She even kills Wild Knuckles allegedly. <laughs> a real evil woman who got herself a lot of possible life sentences. The Easter chick himself, Carlos, is the right hand of the Easter bunny. He is jealous of the power and overthrows his own boss to rule Easter and start a chicken revolution. He locks up all the rabbits and wants to kill the Easter bunny and Fred. He even transforms into a bunny and beats the crap out of E.B. For his treason, he would definitely face a death sentence. Then, starting the top three, we have Balthazar Brat. Think of a dancing disco goofball, and you basically have Mr. Brat. He uses yo-yos, Rubik's cubes, and bubblegum to pull off crazy stunts. He impersonates others to steal a giant crystal he uses to make a big version of himself to terrorize the city. This terrorist wouldn't get out of the legal system alive. No! In second place, we have the big evil turtle dragon named Bowser. Bowser steals the ultimate treasure, the star, and with it, he wants to rule the realms and marry Peach the princess from the Mushroom Kingdom. But a plumbing duo gets in his way and rob him of his dreams. He captures Luigi and pulls on his moustache, which hurts a lot. They do if they have good days! But next to the moustache pulling, he also wanted to sacrifice the entire Snow and Kong Kingdom to Lava as a present for his forced marriage to Peach. After Peach refuses, he launches the Bomber Bill to destroy the entire Mushroom Kingdom. Destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! In the end, he gets locked up in a cage with a tiny mushroom. For now, it is attempted genocide and terrorism, which would get him a few death sentences, but who knows how he will come back in a possible part two. At the number one spot, we have Scarlet Overkill. As one of the first human leaders of the Minions, she has stolen an ungodly amount of stuff. Scarlet's ambitions are to become the Queen of England. Somehow, Bob ends up the King of England, and she uses Bob to become an evil queen. But she turns her back on Bob and the Minions and attacks our Lord King Bob. Then her anger makes her want to murder all minions, and in her final stretch for the crown, she faces the infamous freeze ray that stops her in her tracks. At least I have my tracks. I hope you enjoyed this new type of video and let me know if I should rank more villains from other studios. See ya.